Polaris Dong Crew completes first ever commercial spacewalk. SpaceX's commercial Polaris Dong mission launched on Tuesday, September 10. It culminated in a spacewalk that also saw the crew test out SpaceX's new, lightweight spacesuits. SpaceX's privately funded Polaris Dong mission has already set several records since its launch on September 10. Hours after liftoff, the Crew Dragon spacecraft reached an altitude of 1,400 kilometers (870 miles). This is the highest orbit ever reached by a manned spacecraft and the farthest human spacewalk since the Apollo missions in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The mission culminated in the first ever commercial spacewalk. It took place at an altitude of more than 700 kilometers (430 miles) above Earth and was attended by American billionaire and mission captain Jared Isaacman and SpaceX engineer Sarah Gillis. Jared Isaacman and Sarah Gillis made history by becoming the first people to walk in space on a private mission. In preparation for the spacewalk. The Crew Dragon capsule was completely decompressed. Only spacesuits protected the four-person crew from the vacuum of space. Shortly after, Isaacman opened the hatch and climbed the ladder, and below him was a breathtaking view of Earth. After the billionaire, Sarah Gillis did the same, and while admiring our planet, she conducted motion tests to assess how SpaceX's new spacesuit, significantly less massive than its NASA counterpart, works in the vacuum of space. Until now, only government agencies have managed to conduct spacewalks, known as EVAs, extravehicular activities. This is a difficult undertaking. Most of them have been conducted from the International Space Station, ISS, and China's Tiangong Space Station. But private companies are gradually taking the initiative in spaceflight, as evidenced by the Polaris Dong mission. NASA Chief Bill Nelson said the successful spacewalk was a huge step forward for the commercial space industry and NASA's long-term goal of building a vibrant American space economy. The Polaris Dawn mission is Isaacman's second funded by the 41-year-old, who made his fortune in credit card payment processing systems. His first space mission was SpaceX's Inspiration4 mission, an all-civilian orbital space flight that took place in 2021. Isaacman declined to say how much he paid for the Polaris Dawn mission, but it is estimated to have cost him hundreds of millions of dollars. Ian Whitaker of Nottingham Trent University said the success of the first spacewalk by an astronaut outside a space agency was hugely exciting for the private space industry because it is the first step on a longer path to space tourism. The high cost means that for now only the ultra-rich will be able to experience it, but putting that cost in the hands of companies means taxpayer money can be used for other things, Whitaker said. The spacewalk lasted about 30 minutes, and Isaacman and Gillis did not actually leave the capsule, but climbed out of it while on a ladder. NASA defines a spacewalk as any time an astronaut leaves a vehicle in space. The first human to complete a spacewalk was Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov. On March 18, 1965, he spent 12 minutes outside his spacecraft. His mission demonstrated some of the risks associated with spacesuit design. By the end of the spacewalk, Leonov's spacesuit had inflated so much that he had trouble fitting into his spacecraft's airlock. He had to manually deflate to get inside. The Polaris Dawn mission is scheduled to last six days. During this time, the crew will conduct 36 experiments designed by 31 partner institutions, including NASA. Mystery of a year-old seismic signal solved. 
It was all because of a massive landslide. Last September, seismologists around the world detected a strange signal they had never seen before that lasted for nine days. Now, they have finally identified its cause. It turned out that the signal was caused by a colossal landslide in a remote Greenland fjord, which caused tsunami waves up to 200 meters high. On September 16, 2023, a mysterious seismic signal swept across the world. Scientific equipment indicated that it came from eastern Greenland, but it lacked the frequency changes that usually accompany events like earthquakes. And it lasted for nine days. After a year of research, an international team of scientists has finally determined that the signal was caused by a giant landslide. In a Greenland fjord, a mountaintop slid into the sea and triggered a tsunami about 200 meters high. The giant wave rocked inside the narrow fjord for nine days, generating seismic waves that echoed through the Earth's crust, leaving scientists around the world stunned. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Science. Scientists quickly recorded the mysterious signals. But they were confused. This is the first time we have found a seismic signal of this type in global records. Some researchers thought their sensors were broken, says Christian Svenevig, a geologist at the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland in Copenhagen, who led the research. The signal quickly spread around the world. It even reached one seismic station in Antarctica. In fact, the seismic waves spread around the world for nine days, like some giant bell. Scientists were initially confused by the signal. During the study, they received a message from scientists managing scientific instruments in the Dixon Fjord in eastern Greenland that sea level gauges had recorded a large tsunami there. Everything was starting to come together because the tsunami occurred in an uninhabited valley near the source of the signal. Satellite images and drone footage revealed the whole truth. The signal was caused by a colossal landslide in eastern Greenland. According to the researchers, a 1.2 km high peak collapsed into one of the fjords. The rock slide high above the valley hit the glacier and, together with part of it, fell into the water. About 25 million cubic meters of rock and ice fell down the glacial gorge. Scientists suggest that the mountain was destabilized by climate change, which melted the glacier at its base. Although the researchers found the culprit, they still did not know how the landslide could have caused such a long-lasting reverberation. The waves recorded were surprisingly uniform quite different from those generated by earthquakes. They were also very long, repeating every 90 seconds. Similar waves are often created by volcanoes, but these signals usually last minutes or hours, not days. Fortunately, the research station at the mouth of Dixon Fjord, although abandoned for the winter, had automatic recording equipment that gathered a wealth of information. When researchers later visited the site, they found a dark strip of sediment on the glacier's surface left by the highest waves. But tsunami waves usually pass within minutes or hours. Why did they last for more than a week in this case? To find out, the researchers simulated a tsunami using high-resolution maps of the channel's shape and depth. They found that the sharp bend toward the mouth of the fjord and the ice dam at the far end prevented the tsunami's energy from dissipating. In addition, the landslide entered the fjord at a right angle, so most of the energy was directed toward the opposite wall. The result was resonance waves about 7 meters high that spread between the narrow walls of the channel for 9 days. When we set out on this scientific adventure, Everyone was confused and no one had the slightest idea what caused the signal, says Svenevig. 
All we knew was that it was somehow related to the landslide. We were only able to solve this mystery thanks to a huge interdisciplinary and international effort, he adds. The team of scientists involved in this study consisted of 68 scientists from 41 research institutions. No one was hurt in the landslide and tsunami. The only damage was the destruction of $200,000 worth of research infrastructure at an uninhabited research station on the nearby island of Ella. Scientists say that the worsening effects of climate change could trigger more devastating landslides in the polar regions. Pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil.